Here's Brody Brazil. There's like no question with me that America has a stadium problem. We're starting to go through these world-class venues after like 25 or 30 years. They become outdated, we can't fix them up, we don't like the location. It's crazy that in modern times, I mean, it's one thing if a stadium is from the 1800s or the 1910s, like Wrigley and Fenway are. But some of these stadiums were built in the 90s already. And here we are in the 2020s getting rid of them. Now that's Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium, which was fine, but has already been replaced not once, but now Atlanta's on their second baseball stadium since this one. They played at Turner Field that was built for the Olympics in the early 90s, and then they moved to their current SunTrust ballpark now. But it just goes to show you, like, you built something for 20 years and already you move on. So how can we fix this problem of running through stadiums so quickly? Can we made, uh, make stadiums age more gracefully? Life expectancy of 30 years? That's crazy for how much they cost. Stadiums these days are 1.5 to 2 plus billion dollars. And this is kind of a North American thing, isn't it? Look at across the pond in Europe. There are 19 Premier League soccer stadiums from the 1800s. Now, it's not to suggest that improvements haven't been made. They have, but the site hasn't changed. They've altered some of the stuff of the stadium. They've probably kind of re-pieced everything together. It's kind of like an antique airplane. Every part is not the, uh, not the same since when it was manufactured. But it's basically the same thing, and it didn't need to be completely torn down or imploded or overhauled all at once. Imagine that if there were 19 Major League Baseball stadiums from the 1800s. Hard to fathom. I think location is a huge part of it. Once you have your forever location, and maybe that's what we're seeing right now with baseball in North America. A team not only wants to have a great venue, but they want to have it in the place that they know is perfect for them, central to downtown, central to something else, that they will always want to be there. I think the way, by the way, to make stadiums age gracefully is to have more of a moder modular design, a modern design, a modular design. In that, a lot of these soccer stadiums have, with, with a rectangular pitch, four different sets of bleachers and stands. So if one season you want to rip out one quarter of the stadium and re totally rebuild it, done. It's kind of a problem in modern baseball stadiums. You got to tear the whole thing down. You can't chop off half and do something else. But soccer, that seems to be a way that those stadiums exist better and longer. How about the built-in savings? that need to happen that sometimes don't happen. I mean, improvements are bound to be necessary and maintenance will definitely bring extra costs. What I'm talking about here is when you build a new stadium these days, it, like in Milwaukee right now, they built a stadium 22 years ago for 400 million. Well, now, 22 years later, they need 480 million to improve it for the next 20 years. And they might leave if they don't get it. They'll build another stadium somewhere else. These costs have to be factored in to all planning from now on. When you build a new stadium, you've not only got to figure out how to pay for that current venue, but also how to keep it up for its next 20 years after its first 20 years. It shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, if anybody owns property or a house, you understand that when you buy it, yeah, that's a... That's a hit to the wallet. That's sticker shock. But the things that house will inevitably need over time, keep your receipts on those too. They will also bite you in the butt. Seems like stadiums, we never, we never planned for that. Public financing. I know that's a huge conversation. A lot of people are against it. I don't have any control over it. It varies by region. Some states, some cities, some counties... Maybe they have an excess of money. They want to contribute to their team. Other places, especially on the West Coast, they don't. Stadiums and venues need to be privately funded, it seems, on the West Coast. So this is an issue that varies by region. But it's almost become expected in some leagues that because we get it 
here and there and over there, you're also going to give it to us too. And those cities are having conflicts. Look at Oakland as a prime example. Oakland went out and gathered grants to secure their funds for infrastructure for a ballpark for the A's. But in Las Vegas, uh, they're offering public money to help build the stadium itself. Like money from the state and money from Clark County. But it's become expected public funding in almost all leagues. Fair or not. My opinion is that public money should only ever come with private finance disclosures. Meaning that if you're a team and you're about to collect $500 million from the state or the county or the city, you also have to open up your books and show why you can't afford that $500 million. That's fair, right? If you're going to show cards to everybody else, why does somebody get to hide their cards and collect the money? That should become a new rule. A new duration of agreement here. Many teams sign a 30-year like non-relocation agreement. 30 years is, you know, what you do for a mortgage on your house. But we're talking about a baseball franchise or a, or a football franchise or something that wears the city's name across their chest. 50 has to be the new 30. Don't make it easy for teams to get out. There should be no escape or relocation clauses to build a stadium, right? You build a new stadium, you sign this non-relocation agreement. This is not like you're building a stadium that could easily be transformed into something else. These are custom venues which are very much like white elephants. They're hard to use for anything else besides an NFL team, an NBA team, an NHL team, or a baseball team. So if you're going to do commitment here, like make it last. 50 has got to be the new 30. I also think another way to fix our stadium problem is to have all these venues be centered around non-game days as much as they are actual game days themselves. Stadiums can't only be appealing on the days that a team has a game. It should become a hub first, like a place that people want to go. Dining, shopping, entertainment, other events. That's what it should be first. And then, oh yeah, it also hosts our Major League Baseball team. I don't have all the answers to that. I know people can get creative. But it should be more of like a city center type feel of where a baseball team plays rather than, oh, well, that's stadium ABC. We only go there when our team is playing. And we don't go there for any other reason than that. It just doesn't seem like a valuable proposition. Whoa! So that's how, in my opinion, we can fix America's stadium problem. And the one thing I didn't put here is multi-purpose stadiums. We tried that in the 60s and 70s. We tore all those stadiums down. Football and baseball trying to share places. And they do it in basketball and hockey. That makes more sense. Similar seasons. It's more easy configuration. The shape of a rink versus the shape of a basketball court. But... I'm not even saying we need to do multi-purpose. I'm just saying we need to do better in the projects we all undertake. Let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. Thumbs up on this video. You made it here to the end. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel so I can definitely see you back here next time.